So the very first conversation, we're going to be talking about Gigantomastia, and I hope I've said that right. And to have this conversation is none other than the founder of the foundation, uh, CEO of the of the Gigantomastia Foundation, Ruth McKenna. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Thank Asante you for sana kwakuja. Asante. So, Nikama, um, my life lately, say for example, say last year, moving on to this year, you've been sort of like kwa shadow ya maisha yangu. <laughs> I am seeing articles left, right, center about Gigantomastia and I didn't know anything about it until I came across your, your page and you tell us what that is. But so recently I got an inbox from some random human being. I do not know who they were and looking at their page, there was nothing in there. Like they had no profile picture. They just had a message for me. A pseudo account. A pseudo account. Yes. And they're just like, oh, Mikali, you know, I was like you. I felt like this. Oh, and my boobs did not stop growing. And I had, I went through this and this and this and this happened. And Gigantomastia was thrown in there. So this, and then a few, after that happened, a few days later, I was sitting in the makeup room. Then this lady walks and she'd come in for a show here. Uh, I think Real Talk. And then she just sat there and she was just telling me, you know, Mimi, this child, after I'm done breastfeeding, have you, do you know this foundation? <laughs> so it felt like there was just a shadow around me just saying things to me about your foundation and you're here. See how the universe works. I know, right? <laughs> Karibu sana. Asante sana. Please tell us what gig Gigantomastia is. Gigantomastia is abnormal breast growth that comprises of 3% of your body weight. Okay. Can you imagine? Like Whoa. if you're 90 kilos, calculate 3% of that. That is the like size. That is the weight, weight that your breasts have. Okay. Yes. So I'll speak from personal experience. Okay. I had gigantomastia 10 years ago mm -hmm. and I had a breast reduction done and I had a total of 7.3 kilos off my chest. Seven point. Yes, you had Una me right. Na 10 liters. Yes. So 3.9 and 3.4 kgs off my chest. You can imagine. How was it for you, you know, being in the space where before you even get to surgery, you're of course dealing with things that led you to, you know what? Okay, before I was diagnosed with Gigantomaster, I used to have recurrent shoulder dislocations. So my shoulder could keep on popping, popping, and I couldn't point out what exactly is making my shoulder pop the way it used to. Okay. So I went in and saw my orthopedic surgeon, Professor Mulimba, mm -hmm. and he was fixing my shoulder when I was on the table in surgery. And... He was like, you know what, this is the cause of your shoulder, it's always popping. So after that, when I got better, like three weeks after that, he referred me to a plastic surgeon in Aga Khan, mm -hmm. Professor Stanley Hainga. Mm -hmm. And actually when I walked into his office, he was like, yes, you have a, an abnormal chest. Your breasts are too heavy in accordance to your habeas, in accordance mm -hmm. to how your body structure is. Yeah. And he scheduled me in for surgery. And at that time I was 25. Whoa. And I couldn't what like. What size were you? I was a forty-two cup GG. 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 A forty-two cup GG. Okay. So when sometimes I hear people saying, "Oh, I have double Ds," so I'm, I'm like, like I, oh, "I wish I was you." <laughs> I wish I was you then. <laughs> yes. So, but then. now you see, I was a forty-two cup GG. You see, even the struggles of getting a bra. You know. Yes. You walk into a shop and. The lady handling you is like ini nini. Ata hakuna. hakuna. And so lately, they, yes. the, the shops that opened up. Yes. But they're very, very expensive. expensive. Yes. Like, mm. can see you walk into a bra shop and they're telling you a bra is 5,000 Kenya yep. shillings. Yep. Yep. So you wonder, how many do I need? And you know, this is like uh, in yeah, Just the one. Yes. <laughs> so I have interacted with so many girls who tell me now they've opted to go to hawkers. Mm. And when you go to a hawker and you see how hawkers are. Yes. Another one told me, she was told, he kifua, he hapa, as in, that size That's is not true. there. So you see the stigma that comes with it, like, how can you tell me, he kifua, he hapa? And there's a lot of that. Exactly. When, when I go back, and sorry to cut you short, when I realized that I needed to get, like, you know, now special kind of bras, yes. I walked into a shop that I was, they, it was all over the radio stations, yes. that they do measure, you will get Kept. to know exactly what your size is. Yes. And I made the trip. Yes. And I did go. Yes. And uh, they took the measurements. Yes. And I was like, great, at least now we, we're starting from somewhere. Yes. So please just hand me my size then. <laughs> but and you can they, imagine. And they told me, yes. we don't stock. It has to be custom you, made. We don't stock your size. It's like, Nezangoja, I'm letting next month. No, I'm saying we do not. 
<laughs> as in please so go it, with the it, flow it, it is a struggle yes it is a struggle you can imagine Mikali you're walking into a shop with high expectations of I'm gonna finally get a brass size mm. here mm. but lo no, and behold nothing there's nothing I was waiting for you to tell me oh we can custom make for you a bra no. like I'll personally tell you when I'd once visited my brother in the States and went to a shop mm -hmm. and the lady measuring me was like you're way off the range we have to custom make a bra for you so you're like custom make a bra i mean it's like telling somebody you have to custom make for you a petticoat <laughs> or something like that <laughs> so you know i was like custom make a bra you know yeah. and it starts slowly getting into your into your head i mean why am i not like the other girls like mm. it's a walk in walk out walk in walk out so mbili wako na bra imagine and na mesle yake yote na mekanyanga kubwa kubwa so you you're going back home labda to kona ka wash and wear you wash that bra in the mo in, in the night before you go to sleep god forbid in yeshewe you know yeah. it's very antagonizing for for a lady and you know breasts are what define a woman that is what makes you become a woman mm -hmm. like me i can remember like my shoulder dislocations and my back, back pain, pain. It was out of this world. But up until I had to take that leap of faith. And we were told you have to go in for breast reduction surgery. At that time, I didn't know anybody who had had it done in Kenya. Yeah. The only person I could go on Google on was Queen Latifah. Yeah. So I'm thinking, do I inbox her? Does she know me? You know. So you, I just gave myself that courage. Yeah, and I went in and I had the surgery done. It was a three to four hour surgery. Yeah. And I can tell you, it is a life-changing experience. You were in a totally different career before this. Yes. You were, <laughs> you were leading <clears throat> a totally different life. Yes. But then through the surgery and having experienced what it is that you did. Yes. Then you, your life totally changed. Yeah, because I also felt like there's no voice that was there to address Jack and Tomastia. You can even, it's, it's so sad to hear that even insurances are not coming on board for mm -hmm. this surgery because they're calling it cosmetic. Plastic, yeah. Yes. Yeah. But they have to have a borderline as to what is cosmetic and what's a medical condition. Mm -hmm. Like clearly, um, 7.3 kilos, how cosmetic is that? I mean, if I didn't have the surgery done, let's say three, four years down the line, I mean, I think I'd be tied onto a wheelchair because of so the that weight. that means it never stops. There's it never, never a point yes, that it stops. Yes, it never stops going. Like every other day, ever t every six months, you find yourself having to change your bra. Okay. And you know, you don't, you have to buy several bras. Vis-a-vis, mm. -vis, the way you were saying, our mm. age mates, like our age groups, like their bras, even sometimes you could just see them walking without bras. It also limits your dressing, you know. Mm. You don't want to dress in a nice dress. <coughs> and, oh, so you wear the dress, then you're like, ah. Then Apple. you have to deal with yes. bullies, especially if you're very young and you're in high exactly. school. Exactly. Yeah, so, and you get all these names. Like me, I knew my nickname was Freshian. So, mm. hey, I'm a nyonyo. I mean, my two cases. I was so, so young. It was yes, so traumatizing yes. because you didn't know what to do. You didn't know what the reason of this is. Yes. You you had not even accepted it yourself you don't understand i didn't one. know what it is because mm. at some point my mom was telling me i think i need to take in for a breast reduction i'm like a breast yeah. reduction for what mm. so up until i had to hear it like from a doctor or from a surgeon i was like hey yeah hands up i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do this there's so many uh, myths around breast reduction yes and we're gonna get into that yes. but maybe just give us a brief of how you started the foundation how I started the foundation, first of all, is to have a very aggressive awareness program about it. Let the people know or let the public know that this is a condition. Mm. It is not witchcraft. It is not something that you should be shunned about. It mm -hmm. is a condition that can be treated medically through surgery. Yes. And I'm so happy and glad that there are qualified plastic surgeons in Kenya who do a very good job. You don't yeah. have to go to India. Mm. You don't have to go to America. <coughs> you don't have to go to South Africa. And notwithstanding that this surgery is very expensive very expensive it's very expensive so you have to to sensitize the public and make it known to them that it is a condition like you can see somebody saying ah me no mona mgongo lakini ni kosawa you know mm. fine if you're comfortable in your skin it's okay and those ones who say why are you trying to change god's creation mm. you know mm -hmm. and i ask then why did god give these doctors the knowledge to know that this is a condition and have the skill to rectify this condition. Yeah. Yes. And these people who somebody has such a small bust and they have the courtesy to tell you, ah, don't worry. 
Hey, you're just supposed to be like that. Hey, even the mungu alitaka ukue. Mm. It's like telling somebody with cancer, I don't even go for chemo. You're, you're, you're just, you're okay. Yeah. You're just the way you are. Mm. You know, mm. there's that element of education that you need to take a step ahead. Your health is very paramount, you know. Yes. You need to come to terms. It's not easy, but you need to come to terms with it. You can imagine somebody with such low self-esteem because the first thing when you approach somebody is your bust. They don't even look at your face. Yes. Like I've had a scenario where there's a lady who told me that she had been sent to, a, somebody had been sent to her office. He didn't even bother asking her name. And when he called to tell the person that the parcel has been dropped, ah, I mean, so, that is so wrong. That is now anybody who comes to that office, ah, you know, it yeah. is so heartbreaking, you know. Like you have a name There's with so Kali. so much more to me exactly. than, than, that part than, than the part of Exactly. Yeah. So it, it takes a toll on, especially if you don't have, if you don't have like a strong personality mm. or I can say for me, I developed a very strong defense mechanism because mm. I'd wonder why would you ask me such questions? And it's not, I have not asked God to give me this breast. You understand? Mm. It's just the way I am and I have to live with it, you know? And the way you're saying bullies, yeah. like somebody can ask you a question, uh, would ask you a question and you look at them like, did you just ask me that? Yeah. Was it even necessary, you and know? mostly even the women. Yes. They will be there. Exactly. And, and they'll be there, you know, like, and the worst bit is the people who are closest to you, like your relatives, your extended, are the first people to have like low to, tones, to, 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 to speak, to speak in low tones. Mm -hmm. to, Ule amanza kulala, amanza kujua wanaume mapema, yeah. uwe ametoa watoto, you know. It's so wrong and it's so stigmatizing. Gigantomastia should be looked at holistically. Yes. From homes to schools to wherever you are. You understand? Like in, in high school, like I remember, you there with big breasts. Can you answer the question? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you're in school. That's a teacher who so should wrong. be very sensitive to how yes. you are dressing girls in a class. So, you know, it takes, the way you're saying, Mikali, self, mm. uh, your self-esteem. Yeah. And once your self-esteem starts being sucked, the life out of you when you're young yeah. so what happens to you like 10 or 20 years later later yeah and then later you're telling them oh stop overdressing you know dress like a girl <laughs> yes you put that part of them out of their system when they were really young exactly just before we take a very short commercial break I just add you to send in your questions if you have any questions whatever if the very first time if it is the very first time you're, you're hearing the word gigantomastia what it is about if you feel like you are suffering from it triple one triple four triple one because ruth will be here to answer all of your questions we're going to be finding out what her foundation exactly does don't go too far we'll be right back after this break Welcome back. Welcome back to Full Circle with Murkali. We're talking about gigantomastia, a condition that uh, I don't have the proper words to put in there, but somehow your breasts don't stop growing and they're 3%. The weight of them is 3% of, of your, your normal, of your, of your whole body weight. So it is a condition. We are trying to understand the physical, the emotional, you know, pain of living through it. And Ruth McKenna, who's the founder of the Gig Gigantomastia, that name is just intimidating. <laughs> foundation <laughs> is here to talk to us about it. Please tell us what the foundation does now. Because like you mentioned earlier, it is a very, very expensive procedure. Yes. And most people, especially the young ones, will see them walking around and you're wondering what to do. Probably they come from a very humble background. background They're not able yes. to afford um, like, this surgery. I'll speak from a point of experience as well. Okay. As, as you said, you've gone through my page, right? Yes, and I have. Yes, I have. My landmark surgery was a very young girl who had just finished class eight. Yeah. And she was from Kiambu County. And... I happened to see her story on a television. She was, she was featuring on television. And her breasts were all the way here. And class I went eight. class eight. And I went to see the girl and when I saw her I actually felt like I was gonna break down. And I told myself, if I'm not strong for her, who's going to be strong for her? So she narrated her story to me and she told me she actually wrote her exam on her knees. So there's a point uh, in scenario whereby it's a humble background. This is a girl who has done her exam on her knees. She's she doesn't even have that bus fare to go to hospital. 
or she's been going to hub to herbalists mm. and she's been told just apply this on your breasts they'll go back that is the point that i lobbied with the county government of kembu so that's the first tier that such small children we don't even after the surgery we had 9.5 kilos removed off her Nine chest Nine point yes 9.5 kilos this is a girl in class eight 9.5 kilos her health is just deliberating by the day how is how was she psychologically so after that we just don't leave it at the surgery we extend to the girl child what next after surgery are we just going to abandon you because you're okay we lobby the county and we tell them if you can include this child in your bursary mm. fund like now four years down the line i'm happy to say that the girl went to chania girls she got a b nice and she's living her life to the fullest yes that notwithstanding you know there are some people who can talk about this condition to just anybody else. So where does the foundation step in? We give you a listening ear mm. because I have been in those shoes and I totally understand where you're coming from. Like there's a lady who even, sh you see the way you have kids in school and they sports day. Yes. S I know the parents are there, they're there, they're being told to run. And you know, and your mom is just seated there. Not that she doesn't want to participate. It's because there's something limiting her. And then after, it, after, after sports day, you know the way it used to be, did you see how my mom beat your dad or something like that? Yeah. Your son or your daughter can't contribute because in that conversation didn't. because you did not participate and he does not understand why you did not. So it trickles down back to the family. Mm. Like, mommy, when you like the rest, mm. it gets to you as a woman very psychologically because yes. there's nothing you could do. You would have wished to be there to participate to participate there are those ones who can afford the surgery right but they don't know where to start mm. or who to go and see what to anticipate you know if you can hear it for somebody who's had it, had it done firsthand it's easier to walk the journey with that person you understand mm. clear their minds of all those doubts they have there's these people people who say there's fear of the unknown there's something you say today yeah. A day above the ground is a blessing. Is a blessing. Yeah. Because you don't even know tomorrow, you might walk outside your gate and yep. a bus rolls you over. Yep. So there's that part of we, there's reassurance because I work with the best team of doctors who they have done these surgeries day in, day out, mm. and they have perfected the art. Even as we go and people ask, will you be able to breastfeed? Yes, you will, because technology is evolving every other day. So one of the myths is that you're not, you should do this after you've gotten children because you'll not, not be able Not necessarily, okay. not necessarily. Mm -hmm. The technologies have, they have, as in, the way you have iPhone 8. Yes. So tomorrow there'll be iPhone mm. X. There's, the technology keeps on going on. And these surgeons, they keep on improving their skills and they, they're always reading about how to improve the skills. Yes. Yes. And you can see there's no age limit as to when you can get gigantomastia. Mm -hmm. We're talking about 13-year-olds, 14-year-olds. Mm -hmm. I had mine when I was 25. Can, you can, it can be spontaneous. Like the others who, it even just sprouts in six months. Yeah. So what we do is even we try to co-share with the patient and try to make it happen for you. You know, it's a life-changing experience. Yes, it is. Yes. And I'm happy to say, probably you have not gotten the help from me. But the fact that you know that this condition can be treated locally and you take that leap of faith to even visit another plastic surgeon to have the surgery done, it warms my heart. Because what have you done? You have come to terms. as in You're making yourself a better person than you were yesterday. Yep. Yes. So there's that awareness bit that even in Mashinani, you know, there's a lot of stigma. Ah, well, it's, I will rogo. Mm, that is true. Yes. Mm. Then others, they hear the music. You know, mm. there's that knowledge or that education to know that it is reconstructive surgery to make you a better person. It's not for beauty, but to help you. With your self-esteem. With self -esteem. With pains. Very many your shoulders issues. shoulders were tired. Exactly. <laughs> they, had, they had given in. <laughs> they had given in. So and there's so much And it would be more. my clarion call, like, even for the government to come in and, you know, yeah. even the insurance companies mm -hmm. to come up with a policy and to be able to draw the line as to where it's cosmetic and where it's medical. Yes. Yes. So we have a couple of questions here for yes. you. Uh, hi, Mwikali. I'm 21 years old and I have a big bust. I've had a big bust my whole life. This has really made me have a low self-esteem. I used to wear a bra and a boob top 
in high school i started wearing in high school i started wearing bras when i was in primary school and i got bullied by other students including teachers i remember was when i was in form two my stepdad asked my mother to investigate where i pass after school because my bust is so big and it's the same thing that you were saying that uh, people would be like oh you you must be seeing some boy now yes you must be using some pills now. yes you're, lo you're losing you're using contraceptives at yeah. 21 or you're having sex at a very really early age or yeah. you're aborting children yes. i mean yes. and that's not the case and that is why i'm saying that is one of the cause like these stereotypes that have been associated with this like i mean mikali at 21 you you have low self esteem uh -huh. where you getting time to go and look for boys to talk to you the thing even what after school you're just seeing the, the next thing you're seeing is the gate to go home you don't yeah. want to talk to anybody you know you just want to be and who so this is 21 she's 21 yes, now yes she's 21 now yes. imagine in primary school thank you and now those those undertones that and let me tell you Mikali, one thing that also kills me is undertones that people have especially people who are close to you yes yes you find like aunties, they have held naka kamukunji, unamunanga sikuizi. Eh, vijana. It is very wrong. It, it is. is a medical condition. condition. Yes. Uh, Switch TV, good morning. Wikali Amses, I'm 28 years old. I love the talk about gigantomastia as I experience the same. Currently, I'm 58 kgs, uh, yet I put on a 34D. D, 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 D bra. 34 DD bra, which I think I'm just trying to fit in. It's a bit small. Kindly advice on what to do or how to get the right size of bra or what to do. I also get frustrated while shopping for bras. And we've just spoken about that, Nikali. Yeah. As in, it's very unfortunate, like, gigantomastia has not been given a voice like how we talk about breast cancer, yeah. how we talk about fistula. Mm. You mm. know, Mm. It's not been given the weight yes. that it's been given. That is true. Yes. That, that is, is so where there's very little awareness about it. And that is where people are suffering in silence. Mm -hmm. Yes. So one of the core, as I, I will repeat again, is awareness on this issue. That people should come on board and don't feel shy or don't feel shunned to come and talk about it. A problem shared is a problem half solved. Great. Yes. So if, um, what would be the telltale signs of I might be developing this Jack condition? Thomas, yeah. yes. If you're having concurrent back pains, like for me, I think mine was way overboard because I was dislocating my shoulder. Mm -hmm. Very heavy burst, you know. Mm -hmm. You can even, I mean, from walking to here until there, you're panting. There's, because there's a lot of weight on your chest. Mm -hmm. The brass strap digging here. It already shows why is the brass strap digging. It's because the weight is too much. It's so too it's the strap is trying to accommodate that weight. Sometimes your neck is paining. Mm. If because the weight now is coming all the way. And the shoulder and the brass straps have dug into your shoulder. So you feel like your neck is really, really paining. Sometimes you're getting unexplained headaches. You don't even know where they're coming from. Mm. Uh, so medics also say you can find your, hum, your, your, your hand is numb. Ooh. Yes. Oh you can't goodness. explain. Okay. Yes. Okay. okay. There's caprotano. Mm -hmm. If you can if you can Google that. Mm -hmm. It's something I read just the other day and I was like, wow. So gigantomastia contributes to capro the caprotano, like when your 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 wrists or your um. arm is very painful. Okay. It's associated with gigantomastia. Okay. So I can't say you can go to hospital and tell the doctor, please take a sample of my blood and tell me I have <laughs> gigantomastia. No, gigantomastia yeah. is symptomic. The symptoms that you present is what diagnosis is, is a diagnosis of, of gigantomastia. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, my sister has big boobs and she's in form two and she is overweight. How do you come about it? It does. Uh, how how do you come about it? Does she have to lose weight? Please help. So there's also the thing for maybe if you lose weight the breasts will go as well it's 50 50 because there are women who have interacted with they have hit the gym day in day out yeah so you see your lower part your lower body part is reducing but your bust is still big ah. so you have to know that is the point whereby you can consider having a breast reduction okay yes and there's this question whereby women ask if i have the breast reduction before i get children mm -hmm. will it go back to the same size it was mm -hmm. unfortunately the, the good thing is that once you have the reduction, it doesn't go back to like here. Yeah, you see, like supporting documents, yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, 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 they don't become that big. Fine, they will just grow because when you, when you, because they're preparing for milk, like because you have to lactate. 
but they don't go to extremes as to where you were previously. Mm. Okay. Yes, okay. yeah. Um, hi, Mikali, thank you so much for this conversation. Um, could you finally kind out how much it would cost if I wanted to go to the foundation to get help? Now, if you want help from us, you have to come in first and we okay. need to have a conversation with you. Mm -hmm. As you said, there are very many tiers that we look at. Yes. So we have to come and have a candid conversation and see what tier you best fit in. Mm -hmm. Yes. So they need to come in and then now yes. you understand even their background. Exactly. Where they're coming, coming from. from. There's some who will probably be like, here's a check, I'm good to go. Like I want to go in tomorrow. Tomorrow. Or tomorrow, exactly. Yes. So and is there a particular hospital that does that or it is no, different? No, it's different hospitals because yes. surgeons go to different hospitals and mm -hmm. in different hospitals, the charges are different. Mm -hmm. What you'll be charging in Nairobi, Naga Khan, in maybe Kenyatta is not the same. Okay. That's why you need to come on board and we start walking the journey With together. You. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. What happens afterwards? Is it possible to regain the weight then after that? Or how does it go about after you've gone through the surgery? Okay, I'm 10 years supposed to. Ooh, yay! So <laughs> it has never gone back to 7.3 or yes. even as much as I add weight. Mm -hmm. they do, I don't feel like I'm back where I was 10 yes. years ago. Yes. yes. And how do you get to choose the size that you get reduced from to so that is a conversation you have with the surgeon in theater when they're doing the ah, markings okay yes okay. you know ideally the surgeon just can't tell you no you can go from a g to a b you mm. know it's good for you to have the conversation when he's doing the markings on you it's a whole process you yes. know so by the time even you're going under you have the markings you had a candid conversation with the surgeons sometimes i'm there with you when you wake up, you know, you have such great moral support. <laughs> I see you in there. I see you a lot in the pictures. Yes. When they go in, they don't feel like they're going in alone. Alone, that yes. I have somebody who's gone through this exactly, before. Exactly, yes. And she's right here with me, yes. walking this and journey it's with me. It's very satisfying just it to is. even see how those doctors meticulously do that work. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. Uh, are there scars afterwards? There's a scar, but Mikali, let me ask you <laughs> a very simple question. Niswali. <laughs> Here we are, yes. 7.3 kilos later. Me, I will speak for myself. Please. Even if you're going to tell me, Sijui, I'm going to have a scar from here <laughs> to here, it is okay. okay. Yes. But you know, this is the way they're saying it is plastic. So it is yes. very, a very fine line, mm -hmm. depending on the technique the surgeon will use. Okay. And it goes, it won't it go completely, but it fades. You can hardly tell it's there. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, recovery time? Three to four weeks. Okay. And that does not mean you're bedridden. Ah, yes. And when okay. you're in hospital, you stay in for three to four days because we have the drains on you mm. to drain the, the, the blood that is left inside so that you don't get infections. Okay. Yeah. I think I think nimetoa kila kitu yenye. Kama kuna mtu alikuwa na swali. Hi, Mikali, my baby is one year old. Um, na one breast mefura kidogo is this normal? So we've gone to yes. full on from gigantomastia to this let's talk about something else. <laughs> yes. yes, yeah. But I don't, I don't, I don't think you would know what that is. No. Um, kuna mungine anasema, uh, how can? Huh? Hi, hello, girls. It's unfortunate when people address people with gigantomastia with such phrases. It really makes one feel and loved people should be taught of such conditions and that's why we're having this conversation because people need to know exactly what is happening how can gigantomastia not affect my life emotionally is there a way that it cannot affect you because that's how can gigantomastia not affect my life emotionally well, I don't even think I have an answer for that because <laughs> from day one, you knowing that you have gigantomastia, yes. it affects you emotionally. Absolutely. It does. So it's just up to you to know how you're going to deal with the situation. Uh, yeah. And uh, it's good for me to mention that also men suffer from this thing. Yeah. And they have gynecomastia. Yes. You can imagine now a man with boobs, moobs. Moobs, yeah. Moobs. moobs. You had the guys, ah, this guy has moobs, by the yeah. way. You can imagine what that also does to a man. So you handle that as well? Yes. The like, foundation yeah, does. We al they also come on board and we try to help them walk that journey. And that's why I'm also saying that these issues, they need to be brought on the table with a lot of weight, not sweeping it under the carpet. It is a condition that needs to be addressed very holistically. Okay. And where do I say them? Even from homes, Mikali. Yes. It starts from the home. Absolutely. Yes. Ruth, how can people get in touch with you and the foundation as well to get help, knowledge, awareness? Yes, um, yeah. I have a Facebook page, Giganto Master Foundation, Instagram, Giganto Master Foundation, and the phone number is 786 406036 I'll say it again, 786 
0406036. Thank you so much, Ruth, for coming through. You're welcome. We're going to take a very short commercial break. We'll be right back. This is Full Circle with Mikali. <laughs>